All right, coach, go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about the hiring at Chester and then we'll line up for questions. Great to see everybody. Hope everybody's enjoying a little sunshine today. Uh, very, very excited to, uh, to have Chester coming on board. Uh, this is a, a young guy that obviously all of you know, or most of you, uh, from, his, from his playing days. And uh, a guy that has uh, accelerated his coaching career and, and his, uh, uh, his status in this profession. And, um, uh, you know, he's, he's been very blessed. He became, a head, or became a, an assistant coach at the Power 5 level at the age of 25 and, and has been in it 10 years. Uh, been involved with some great coaches uh, and, and a lot of success. And uh, obviously, uh, he's taken the formula that was his uh, – uh, the way he played, his, his aggressiveness, his passion, uh, and that has translated into the coaching world. And uh, <clears throat> uh, so it, it's, uh, it was very exciting for me. I was, I've, I've very much been looking for someone that, that's got uh, a vested interest in Illinois basketball uh, and helping us win championships. Uh, he's the, there was nobody better than him in, in my eyes in terms of his success, his, his ability to recruit, his ability to coach, motivate young people. Uh, we have a lot of the same qualities, uh, and it, it's, it's exciting to see somebody that has, has sweat equity in a program and now get to come back. One of the great things that uh, uh, I take a lot of pride in as, as a coach was I got to spend some time back at my alma mater as an assistant coach and, and, and help uh, uh, elevate that program. And, and uh, Chester's got that same feel, that same uh, uh, passion and drive. And um, it, was, uh, uh, it was very, very evident. I've got a tremendous amount of respect for Mike Young. <clears throat> and uh, uh, I know uh, Chester's love for, for Mike was very evident, made it very difficult in this process. And, and uh, uh, Mike's an excellent coach, done a great job at Virginia Tech in his couple of seasons. And, and uh, so we're, uh, we're excited to have him and, and uh, feel very, very fortunate to find somebody of his qualifications and, and obviously a guy that, uh, that loves the orange and blue uh, and has followed it really throughout his, his, his whole career. And, and uh, so excited to have him on board. And it's a, it's a great day for, uh, for Illinois basketball. <clears throat> Hi, hey coach. Um, a lot of turnover on the staff here, you know, in the in the off season, uh, and it comes at a time when recruiting is kind of at the forefront, and the dead period's ending on June first. How, how have you approached this in terms of a seamless transition into still working on the same kids that uh, Orlando and and Chin were were recruiting? Yeah, I think that's one of the things that uh, you know is 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 goes along with success. Um, you know, I think that. Uh, Orlando and Chen, uh, you know, were, were fantastic in, in helping us build this and side by side. I think the days of, of maybe coaches <clears throat> uh, at this level, uh, you know, being in, in, in one place too long or over, they're either going to get a head coaching jobs or, uh, you know, in this case, uh, you know, having to be Kentucky. Uh, but I think it's one of those situations. It's very unique. But um, yeah, we, I've always, I always, you know, I pay, I, I pay as much attention to coaches and how they interact and who I like when I'm on the road. Uh, you know, our situation uh, is obviously much different now than it was four years ago when we took over. Uh, so you're looking for the right fit. Uh, you're looking for uh, uh, the things that uh, can help you grow at another level and, and Chester's, uh, Chester's passion and, and uh obviously playing here and having the success he did was, was exactly what we were looking for. Yeah. Along those lines, if you could elaborate a little bit, um, is there in filling these vacancies or is there a specific profile that you're looking for? Uh, you know, are you looking at for guys who develop players or more for recruiters or, or a little bit of both? Yeah. All the above. I mean, our, our guys, you guys, you guys have been around me, you know, our guys are active in practice. They coach. Um, you know, I think that's, uh, um, you know, I think that's one of the things that that I demand from a staff is that they're not just uh, a, a recruiter. Uh, I think it's really important that uh, that I like them. Uh, you know, I'm never going to hire a guy for a player um, or, or, or any of that. I think it's a, the relationship piece is a big part of our program. 
Doug, I think that was that was you saw that evidence of of how that rubs off on our players and our locker room and our camaraderie and our culture. And uh, you know, I first and foremost, it's about our it, it's about finding the pieces that fit our culture. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, then they've got to be able to do their job at both ends, and that's recruiting and coaching. So. Um, again, it was uh, it was very very evident that uh, Chester was uh, was and is elite at, at both of those things, and uh, you know the success that they had at Kansas State, the success that uh, uh, that they had at Virginia Tech, and uh, uh, you know again it, it it's it's it doesn't take just one person; it takes everybody, and Chester was a big part of that. <clears throat> Thanks, Coach. Hey, Coach. Good afternoon. Some of the guys on the previous staff, they spent a lot of time recruiting in lots of different areas across the country and even internationally in some of their cases. How important is it for you to have an assistant that isn't pigeonholing themselves into just one area with the connections and the relationships they have? I think every coach you, that, that we talk to has got uh, places that they feel comfortable. And, um, you know, you, you, you go and you, you, you recruit those areas and, and you can find contacts in different parts of the world, different parts of, uh, you know, everybody has got has had success in uh, in recruiting or, or they don't get to this level. And then, you, you, you know, they, they always have a little bit of a niche, whatever it is, but uh, that'll continue. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, Chester's got the people that he likes and knows and uh, you know, our brand is extremely strong. Um, that's one of the biggest changes in, in the last four years is our, our brand now has some, some meaning na nationwide, worldwide. And, uh, you know, I think that that's, uh, that's something that we can continue to sell in all corners of, uh, uh, of the world. You mentioned a little <laughs> bit earlier, Chester having quote, sweat equity in the program. How much do you think that that can help him on the recruiting trail with his connections and his passion for this place? If I'm any indication, and I know how it was with me, a lot. And he's a lot better, he's a lot better than, than I was uh, in terms of uh, the player. And, and, and you just have, he has tremendous passion for this place. And, and man, you, you sell, we sell passion. We, we demand it. So uh, there's no doubt that that um, that will be a, a a prominent piece of of everything he does on the recruiting trail thanks coach i appreciate it hey coach hope you're doing well uh, in these opening weeks of the job for chester what's been your guidance or direction what do you want him to focus on and uh, what are you guys looking at here in, in these these first few weeks of him being at illinois well, there's so many different things that, that that have to happen when somebody takes over. I always worry first and foremost about, you know, his family, and and making sure that, uh, you know, there's 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 a house to sell. There's 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 kids involved. Uh, there's a spouse. There's comfort, uh, and yet, uh, you know, you've got you've also got a job to do, and uh, you know that's um, uh, you know contact with recruits. Uh, Today's world, uh, you know, he, he's, he loves Mike Young. It's also making sure that uh, the exit there is, is handled properly. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's coming up, coming at a time when, when most of our guys are gone and out of town. Uh, you know, finals are wrapping up, so there won't be uh, uh, a lot of face-to-face -face with our guys uh, at this point. But it's, uh, uh, you know, those will all be phone calls that will have to happen, generating recruits, talking about the next level of recruits. Uh, and then as we as we move forward, we'll start talking uh, continually about June, uh, having unofficial visits. Uh, I think we've got, you know, a timeline coming up here. We'll find out exactly what the, the, the summer recruiting looks like. But uh, uh, yeah, and we'll just continue to, to build from there. So it's, it's not it's not a one ended thing. There's there's multiple things. It's very, very hectic for him at this point. And and uh, uh, you know, he's, he's handling it great on a lot of fronts from family to, to the recruiting and the getting to know the current players. You mentioned the qualifications that you liked out of Chester and the vested interest. What else are you prioritizing as you work to fill out the rest of the staff? Yeah. And I think it's, it's guys who want to be and help Illinois win. And, and I think it's, uh, you know, I think it's, it, it's, it's, um, 
I, I look for the character piece a lot. I, I, I look at uh, the familiarity with our program. I look at guys that are, are not just about, um, you know, when tons of calls about, you know, I can bring this guy or that guy or, you know, and, and that I've, I've got no interest in that. Uh, I've got guys that, uh, that I know and that I like and uh, will communicate with, with those guys and, and uh, uh, again, just try to evaluate how they fit our culture. And it's not just, uh, it's not just a random pull them out of a hat and this is the guy that comes. It's, uh, it's, it's very selective. I try to keep it uh, pretty close to the vest uh, in this process. But uh, again, it's, um, it, it's got to be the right fit for Illinois and, and, and people who want to genuinely help us win Big Ten championships. Thanks, Coach. <clears throat> Hey, Brad, uh, those of us who watch Chester as a player probably aren't surprised you and him meshed philosophically. Um, you know, he's such a hard player, you know, toughness. He's all about the everyday guy. How much did you know about that or how quickly did that come through and how important was that in bringing him on board? Hey, damn, the half the half court handshake with Eric Gordon. Are you shitting me? I mean, he blasted that dude. You don't think that didn't fit with me? Uh uh, that's my, that, that we're, we're, we're rocking, we're rocking right there now. Um, no, that's, that's what, that, that, those are the connections you've got to have. Those are the, those are, that's the vibe. And that's the, uh, you know, when you're, when you're trying to put, put the right pieces together, um, you know, you, you, you look for guys with that fire and that passion, and then you combine that with the, the orange and blue and the, uh, you know, the, the 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 love for a university and I you know I this is I, the day that the tennis and golf won Big Ten championships he texted me and I was following the golf on my phone and he texted me that they'd won Big Ten championships I mean that's how much this guy loves orange and blue and 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 so um, yeah and the personalities fit he's he's a great defensive mind uh, and 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 that fire and that passion or something that that uh, that resonate with me uh, a great deal. What do you think he adds as a defensive <laughs> presence, you know, guy who, who excelled at the defensive level uh, for your younger guys and, and obviously even, you know, DeMonte and Trent as they come back? Yeah, I think he's a guy that understands it. He gets it. He's, he's very dialed in on that end of the court. He, you know, it's something that he uh, takes a lot of pride in and, and knows how important it is. He's, he's been with guys, that, with coaches that have been, um, very good there. Yet he's willing to to want to expand and do some different things and has different ideas and um, you know. But but at the end of the day, there's a toughness and a and a and a and a and a grit that uh, uh, is just something that 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 resonates with him and it does me and and it's 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 why we had success this year uh, and and he's great at it and and he, and he and he passes that on to young guys as a way to. Um, uh, to, to really be effective as a coach. Thanks, Brad. <clears throat> hey, Brad. Uh, if, if I'm right that this is sort of like a crossroads for, for you at Illinois, where in this, at the same time you're, you know, you're moving on without your, your best couple players and, and also having to rebuild the staff a little bit, is that daunting? What is your disposition toward that challenge at this time? And in a greater context, is it just sort of harder to stay there than it is to get there once you, you know, once you uh, raise a program like this? I don't know. I did it at SFA. I, I don't, you know, I mean, I, I believe me, I, uh, the climb's hard. You know, everybody, we're going to find out. I, I think the one thing that you're doing is, is you're in a league with, with great programs, great coaches. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, you know, people are always coming after you and they, they have great players. And, and so, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, um, you know, we're not going through any of this if, if, if we finished eighth or 10th or, you know, you guys are probably talking to somebody else, you know, truth be told. Uh, it's, the, it's the way the world's going to be uh, with the transfer portal. It's uh, the way the world's going to be when you get good. You, you, you better have pros or you're not getting good. Uh, so I, I don't think that this is a crossroads. I just think it's the new norm and players are going to come and go. 
at a at a at a at a rate. Good players are going to go pro, um, and uh, you know coaches are going to move on when you when you're successful. Um, you know guys are going to become head coaches and move. I just you know I think if you have coaches. Uh, you know, I'll be I'll be shocked in three years if if Chester's not a head coach someplace, and and um, you know I think that's that's the new norm, and and uh, uh, I've accepted that. And I'm ready to I'm ready to go with it, but uh, I'd much rather be doing it from uh, the position we were in, winning 16 games, than uh, than trying to do it from the bottom. Is this the most uh, transition you've you've had in an off season without? leaving yourself, you know, without going yeah. to a job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I think that's, there's no doubt about that. And, uh, uh, you know, I've been, I've been, you know, pretty fortunate that way to, you know, only lose a guy here or there. Uh, but, um, uh, again, I, I get it. I, I try to always be prepared for that. I'm as observant as anybody on the road to, to guys that I think may fit. And, uh, and I pay attention to that, uh, a lot and, and, and start asking questions so that, uh, you know, I've always got a pretty good idea in terms of what direction uh, I feel I need to go uh, if I have those openings. Uh, the, the, the resume for Chester is obvious in terms of the sweat equity that you were talking about, his love for Illinois. You could have known that before you ever met him. But when you sat down in front of him, what were some of the things you either wanted to hear or you wanted him to say that the, the connection has got to be like that because the process is so quick? Well, you know, he, he, he's, he's a guy that you have to be a, um, you have to be blind. You have to be incoherent, really not to, not to have his passion resonate. And, and you see that, and that, that was, that was, you know, it, it's more than a job to him. And, 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 um, you know, I think when we started talking, uh, basketball, we started talking recruiting, um, you know, it, it matches with the success that, that the programs he's been involved with had. And, and, you know, I think the hardest thing to find in today's world is, is, is winners. You know, everybody can look great, you know, if they've got an, if, if they've got a certain emblem on their, on their left chest, but it doesn't mean they're a winner. And, and that winning has always followed Chester. And whether it was the three or four years here, they, they were in the tournament and whether it was, uh, the Elite Eight run at Kansas State, the great success they had at, at Virginia Tech in a, in a very short, it, winning's hard to find. And, and, you, and you just don't, you just don't, uh, I don't take that lightly. And, uh, you know, you started pairing that with his passion and it was, it was pretty obvious. Can you give us any insight as to what the courtesy call was like when you made it to Mike Young and, and was there like a, I mean, Mike, Mike's never been classified as anything but a classic guy, but was there like an odd, ah, damn it, I knew this was coming. No, I, I mean, it was, you know, you, you, I told him I'd like to. He, he said nothing but the, the absolute um, right things and the best things about, about Chester. And, and uh, you know, and then um, he did what, uh, what anybody should do. He, he, he tried to fight for him. And, and again, that's the relationship and the respect and, uh, that those two have for each other. And, and, uh, um, you know, Mike's a dear friend and, and Tyler visited there, uh, out of high school. And, and so I've known Mike a long time and I have so much respect for the job he does. And, and I'm sad for him because I know, um, I know what Chester meant to him and, um, and, and, uh, you know, that he's, he's losing a, he's losing a, a great coach and, and a guy that, that has become a great friend of his. So, uh, you know, I feel I feel for Mike. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Brad. I appreciate it. Hey, Brad, was Chester one of those guys on the road that you identified as a maybe if the opportunity comes across down the line? And if so, do, do you remember what that was? Or I guess, how did you guys get into connect for this position? No, Joe, I started paying attention to him because he was at Kansas State. And, and that's obviously my alma mater, a program that I followed, you know, very, very closely. And and uh, uh, so, you know, as, as you, as you see, see a guy on the road, you, you communicate with him, you talk to him, uh, and that's, those things are great. And, you know, you, you build a little bit of a relationship, but then when you start, you know, seeing, um, uh, the continued success and you start, uh, watching how they interact and then you, uh, you see him expand and grow and take on a new challenge at Virginia tech with, with a guy like Mike young. And, and, and now I'm, 
I know Mike, so I'm, I'm, I'm character wise, I don't think we're a lot different. And, and now all of a sudden that fits and that works. And so it just is, it's one of those things that, that uh, I paid attention very early to him and, uh, uh, you know, kind of always watched out of the, out of the corner of my eye and watched his involvement and the success. And, and uh, here we are today. I know you said this is kind of the way that college basketball is with, with changes happening, you know, frequently for all programs. Was any part of this surprising to you, just given the timing of two guys at one time to the same place? Or, or I guess, when did this start to maybe become clear that there would be this kind of change for you? I, I don't know what the date was. Um, sometime when I was on vacation, uh, which pretty much means I got to redo that with my wife. but. Um, I, you know, there, there's no time in, in today's world to really take a breath. Um, you know, that, you know, 10 years ago, eight years ago, five years ago, whatever it was, this would be a time that, you know, we knew what our rosters looked like and um, we knew what um, uh, things were much more settled. Things are much different today. So I, I'm not, Joey, I've come to the conclusion that, that uh, always expect the unexpected and I'm always going to be, uh, be ready to roll. Uh, with whatever comes either way, in, in, in any scenario. Thanks, Brad. <clears throat> Brad, um, you mentioned, you know, Chester getting that, that KSA job at 25. Just how do you think maybe, you know, having to, you know, maybe going from playing overseas into having to figure it out, uh, D1 high major program, you know, back to back, just maybe sh help shape who he's become as a coach? Well, I'm sure it had to impact it. You know, I, I mean, one of the hardest things to do sometimes is transition from from player to coach. But one of the things that was that was very evident, and and when you talk to people around here, was was his leadership qualities. Uh, you're talking about a guy who was an unbelievable leader, and and had so much respect uh, from so many different players. And and uh, yet, when you take on that coaching role, and you become, and you have those 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 innate abilities, any way to lead those things become almost second nature to you. And, uh, you know, it's easy to see why he, he was very, very successful at a very early age. I guess this may be the first time we've talked with you since the NCAA passed you know, the leg legislation for the one-time transfer. But I guess, mate, how much have you seen that already impact recruiting before it became official and what might it continue to do you know, over the next couple of years? Considering I spent five hours on a Big Ten Zoom this morning uh, with league coaches, I, I I don't have we we don't have near enough time for that, Scott. I, I think that there's 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 going to be so many unattended consequences that come out of this thing. Um, it's a, it's it's a time it's something probably for a different time and and uh, but you know it's it's it's, it's, it's going to be the new norm. So, um, you know, it, it's more general manager right now than, than, than coach. And, uh, you know, you're filling a lot of hats trying to put, put the best, best team together. And, and there's a lot of coaches out there doing the same thing. Thanks, Brad. Coach, in your first year, first four years, you've talked a lot about culture. You've said that word probably more than any other and these two assistants that just left were, were the two that had been with you at the beginning and over those four years you know you built from you know 12 win team to 21 wins to a, a one seed and you kept pointing back to that culture it's built it's building we're getting there we're building what we want does losing those two hurt as far as that culture how do you maintain uh, what you've been talking about uh, with, with with two guys who've kind of been there from the beginning uh, leaving. Sure. I, you know, I'd be, I would be foolish to say that, that those guys did a great job. I, I mean, they were, they're terrific people. And, and it's not about just the players that, that they brought in or the, the, the X's and O's that they did, or this scheme or that scheme or that we talked about. It's, it's, it's overall. And it's, it's having, and, and adapting to my vision and, and the, 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 the culture of our locker room and the personality. And, um, you know, you, you, uh, we never compromised on, on uh, character and, and we backed that up and, and, and the locker room. And those guys are terrific human beings and they fit perfectly 
to what we were looking for when we had when we knew we had to change this and 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 turn it and uh, so you know absolutely they're a big part of it we're in a different place but the one thing that I'm never going to compromise is 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 is, is what our culture is about one of the big changes is now we're a little more player led. Okay. And coaches don't have to do it all, you know, having a Trent DeMonte, Jacob Grandison, you know, guys that have been through it. And, and uh, uh, those guys help establish uh, with other players and the young guys. And, and so, uh, you know, when we first got here, it was me coaching up a, a staff and a whole new team into what we were trying to do. And that doesn't happen overnight. And, and but those guys were, were, were unbelievable. They're unbelievable human beings. Uh, they're going to be great, great friends for, for, for life. And um, you know, I'm going to miss being around them every day and, and not, not, not as coaches, but as people. And they all made me laugh and we had fun and, and, and that resonated through our locker room and, and uh, you know, we're going to go out and, we, we made that, that step today with Chester and find guys that, that fit just like, uh, like those guys do. And in this transition period, do you lean on some of the other guys who are you know, still part of your program, just non-recruiting assistants, Joey Biggs or Jeff Alexander? Are you leaning heavily on, on them to you know, kind of carry that through? Absolutely. Adam Fletcher, uh, Paul Schmidt, our trainer, our academic people, everybody, everybody who touches our athletes is a big part of this. And, and, uh, you know, does, do people have to step up in, in, in times like this? Absolutely. And they have, and that's, that's the beauty of, of, uh, of surrounding yourself with, with really good people who are very capable of doing, uh, doing their jobs and, and stepping in when they need to. Brad, do you look for another assistant to compliment Chester? Like, how do you put that together with your other opening right now? No, absolutely. It's, that's that's the that's that's the primary uh, the primary goal is, is making sure that we're we're uh, we're on the same page. You guys all know I like different players in the recruiting puzzle. I like that in the staff puzzle. And you know, you you go out and you uh, uh, you got we had a Chicago piece, so to speak, with Chen and 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 an and an EYBL coach, and then we had um, you know Orlando you know, with his, with his Dominican descent and his New York ties and, and, and Stevens a small, was, is a small town, Kansas guy and went to school on the West coast. So, you know, you've got all different pieces and I love that. I love that. And, uh, and then you get him into mesh and, and, and that becomes the, um, the beauty I think is I don't want like pieces. I want guys that are, that are different and, and we'll find that with, um, uh, with, 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 with the other guy. What's your timeline? How quickly do you hope to have another guy in there? I don't have one. Uh, when we find, when we, when we get it done, we'll, we'll, we'll announce it. I, I, I mean, it's, it's a constant, um, you know, we've obviously got some time, some timelines coming up with unofficials being back up in June and we'll see what the new recruiting calendar officially looks like, you know, here in a few days, but, uh, we'll have guys in place by then. Where our guys, our guys are all gone. They're not around until, uh, you know, I think the second week in June. So, uh, you know, there's 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 urgency, but there's not real urgency right now with guys gone. And do you expect any more changes on your staff, whether assistants or support staff? We'll see. Never know. Today's world, you never know. Thanks, Brad. Hey, Coach. A quick follow up. Uh, in vetting the candidates to, to fill these openings, um, what kind of feedback are you getting from coaches around the country and uh, in terms of how desirable of a job it is and um, how competitive of a budget do you have to, to fill out the staff? Doug, the worst, the worst thing, and this is very, this is something that, that I, don't, I don't like. Um, I don't like not returning calls, not returning text messages, not, recur not returning emails. I literally have so much interest I, there's no way I, there, I would, there's no way I could return them all. Um, it, it's, it's like I said, our brand has never been better. And, uh, I am, I'm floored that, um, the, the quality of people that have, uh, have shown interest, uh, at, at, at all different levels, really. And, uh, some, and, and all different ages, 
And so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very humbled by that. And, uh, but yes, we're, um, uh, we're, 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 we're acting like a top 10 program. There's no doubt about that. Thanks. Brad Chester mentioned the style of play difference in his coaching career. Obviously Bruce tempo wise is a lot different than you. Obviously Mike is a lot different than you. What made you think that that could work or that would be a fit for you that, you know, he could come in here and do the style of play that you can coach the style of play that you want with your program. Yeah, we, we haven't been drastically different on the defensive side. Um, you know, and I've, I've, I've always tried to adapt a little bit to what our team looks like. Uh, you know, we made some some different changes with uh, the arrival of Kofi and and uh, uh, but uh, you know I think offensively uh, you know we play a, a, a quite a bit faster than maybe the two that he's uh, he, he's worked for, and that's okay. That's a, that's that's pretty easy. The concepts um, aren't drastically different, and you know so we're, we we've talked through a lot of that in recruiting, and again he's. He's um, he, he'll be fine there. Thanks, Brad. <clears throat> and Brad, just I'm curious for you, you know, as Chester kind of moves on to a, a new staff in, in your coaching career, how much did working for maybe a series of different head coaches kind of help you to kind of develop, you know, your style and system? Tremendously, you know, and I, but I, but I've always said the one thing that I always fall back on is winners. And I've, I've been, I was so blessed as a coach. I mean, whether it was my high school coach, whether it was my year in junior college, whether it was Hugs, Frank, playing for Jack Hartman, they're all winners. And, and that's the one thing that I, I always go back to. You adapt your style of play to your personality and what you're comfortable with and, you, and what your team needs. Um, and and that, that is, again, one of the major attributes of, of Chester. I mean, he's, he's, he's one as a player, he's one as a coach, and, and, and I don't take that for granted. And you guys know it's been a big part of our recruiting over the years, and open turn this was recruiting guys that win. And uh, that, that doesn't get near enough play uh, in, in, in the recruiting game, in my opinion, and, and, uh, but it's very important to me. Thank you. Hey, Brett, is, uh, Chester talked about loving your speed and talking about playing at a deliberate pace at Kansas State, which we, we were all expecting him to talk about. Um, is, I, I don't know how to phrase this question, is, uh, is his interest in learning new things a good, a great sign? Is it? Yes, is it? yes, because I want to do the same thing. I, I, I mean, I, I, I say this all the time. I want to, I want a staff who challenges me and, and I want to, I want to, I don't want to put myself in a box and just be that guy. To me, the game's not about that. I mean, I think every NBA team adapts every year, trades are made, personnel changes. Um, you, you've got uh, different pieces. I, 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 I love the, what, uh, uh, the makeup of, of, of what our team is. Uh, right now, um, I think that uh, uh, that excites me. I, I think the ability to play fast. I think the ability to uh, some, to do some things differently on the defensive side excite the heck out of me. So uh, I love people who aren't uh, uh, defined by just one thing. They're, they they they've got the ability and desire to to continually want to learn and change. That wasn't cogently phrased. I'll try again. Uh, he, we think of him as a defensive guy. Yeah. And so we're, and we think of him as a guards coach. So what is he going to do? What are you going to help him do to expand beyond that reputation? Yeah. I think everybody dives into all of our guys and I think we'll, we'll, um, you know, obviously his expertise is, is, is on the perimeter. Uh, we'd be foolish not to put him there, but uh, you know, as is uh, you know, Chen moved around this year. Uh, and did some different things. We, we haven't left guys in, in necessarily one spot. Uh, so, you know, it's um, uh, Orlando's expertise and his comfort was with bigs, um, you know, so, it, but, but it doesn't matter that they may have a great idea to get, you know, Ome had a great idea to get uh, Io a, 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 a shot in a different way, even though he didn't coach the guard. So our guys have those freedoms to uh, uh, not just be, uh, 
stereotype to who they are. Yeah, thanks, Brent. Hey, Coach, I had one more for incoming players like Brandon and RJ, Omar Payne, where O or Chin might have been the lead assistant on them. What's communication been like with them? Have you gotten answers from some or all on, on what they plan to do? How are you navigating that process? Yeah, communication, you know, and I think it's one of the things that, you know, the, the transfer portal has given some, um, some young people an opportunity to, to, to uh, explore. I'll say that these guys have been great. They knew what they were getting into. Uh, assistant coaches are like frontline workers. You know, they, they build the relationships and, and in today's world, in today's world, especially with the trans transfer portal, uh, it's speed dating, you know, and, and there, there, we're not as, we don't have multiple years, you know, and, and I think one of the things that excited me with this group of guys is um, we, we knew what we wanted to sign uh, in, in, in when this school year started. Uh, we've continued to recruit those guys because we knew they fit. And, um, you know, so they felt very comfortable. And again, you just, um, sure, there's a, uh, a certain transition, but the program is is what it is, and and those guys are are have all been great, and, um, and and filling out applications and moving towards being here in June, and we're excited about uh, about that. And when we get staff hired, they'll build great relationships with them, and and uh, again, that's where uh, you know the 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 essence of the program and the vibe of the program hasn't changed. Thank you. Brad, I had one quick follow-up. Chester talked about how never winning a Big Ten as a player really haunts him still. I'm assuming that came up pretty early in your conversations. What's it mean to you to see that much out of him? I mean, that was years ago by this point, but it's still with him. No, that, absolutely. That's what, that's what we all play for in this league. This is the best league in the country. And when you can win a, Nash, or a, a Big Ten championship, and you start putting banners up, uh, and then you have the ability to, uh, uh, to to hang that and come back and be a part of that. That's special. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we, we strive for that. And he made that very clear from day one. That's, that's one of his goals. And it's, it's always one of our top goals every year. Thanks, Brad. All right, Coach. You did it. We are complete. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Coach.